is a drawing of the universe. Here, here is the moon. Today is new moon, so we can't see much of it. Is the sun. 
it pops up and disappears again every day, just like the moon. Then there are all the stars and the Earth. planets surrounded by sound. Some have been documented, but far from all of them. Okay, let's begin. Give me an L! L! Give me an I! I! Give me a G! G! Give me an E, E. Give me a T, T. Give me an I, I. We are in a concert hall, at a town hall, in a theatre, in a gallery, in an abandoned factory, or in an art institute. On stage are 100 metronomes. Beside them are 10 hired performers, each responsible for 10 of the metronomes. The audience can see the metronomes from their seats. They are systematically arranged. They are wound up to, their, to the maximum of their capacity and set at various speeds by the performers. The concert begins with two to six minutes of silence timed by the conductor. The ten performers start the metronomes as synchronized as possible and then they leave the stage. Intervals of rhythmic patterns are created between the individual metronomes. Predominantly towards the end of the piece, rhythmic counterpoints become more prominent. It's a bit like witnessing powerful rain, a downpour from beginning to end. During the concert, the audience often sit perfectly still, listening in their seats. Some smile, and others look serious, as if they are contemplating or meditating. The concert usually ends with one single metronome ticking alone for a few minutes. Then all is quiet, and the performers return to the stage for applause. The composition or the concert lasts approximately seven minutes depending on the quality and strengths of the met metronomes. Principally following the first concert, the audience and media became very provoked and upset about the piece. The first concert took place in a town hall and at this world premiere there was complete silence after the final tick. No applause. Then fierce cries of boo. boo! Yes, and there were threats and screams and yells 
resulting in a TV station cancelling their planned broadcast of the piece and replacing it with a football match. They showed a football match instead. The composer, Ligeti, has since stated that he wrote the composition as a criticism of trends within his field. He explained, I wrote the composition as a criticism of certain movements within contemporary music. Ideology upsets me more than anything. I believe that all ideologies are uncompromising and excluding, and poem symphonic addresses the lot. Apparently, this composition is rarely performed today, as it's hard to find 100 metronomes. My plan was to find 100 performers, but that wasn't possible for today. But I found six, and now, including myself, the seven of us will do the next bit without the 93. So, the six of you, you know who you are. You're very welcome on stage.
Now I'm on a different planet. Give me a T. C. Give me a H. H. Give me an E. E. Give me an S. S. Give me an L. L. Give me an I. I. Give me a T. T. Give me an S. S. The composition or song I'm going to talk about now is free and very unstructured. But the repetitions in its text, is, its lyrics, create an independent structure during the course of the piece. The song would usually be part of a set consisting of five to nine other songs, each lasting about three to four minutes. For this reason, this song is unusual, as it lasts almost 11 minutes. The song is performed by four musicians. There's a singer, a guitarist, a bass guitarist and a drummer, all performing on amplified instruments to obtain the loudest possible volume. It begins with singing of one repeated stanza. It's the title of the song that's sung as a call and response exchange between the lead singer and the other band members. This section turns up again in the song as a kind of refrain. The lead singer continues with an almost chant-like voice. The vocals are predominant all the way through. They use several voices, harmonies and virtually false disharmonies, which are all accompanied by loud guitar phrases. Most of the lyrics are unclear. They're very difficult to understand. The voices vary from whispers to screams. Sometimes the words are spit out and sometimes articulated clearly, and other times just a mumble is audible. The drums and an unstructured bass line introduce dancey swinging elements that create a physical awareness between the music and the audience. The bass line is very low and resonant, and due to the amplification, it can be experienced like direct vibrations throughout the bodies of the audiences. They say that the music and the atmosphere during these concerts stimulate a high production of adrenaline in the audience. The musicians perform freely on stage. They are able to widely dance about as they play and sing. Particularly during the first concerts, songs like this one provoked the expert audiences. Mostly the provocation was because of the use of an offbeat rhythm, which was very uncommon in this genre, but also because of the wide performance of the musicians. Occasionally some audiences would become afraid. They would be scared and run away because the lead singer, lead singer would scream and spit or might even pee on stage while singing if she felt like it. But the majority of the audience would face the stage. They regard the musicians, jump up and down and dance along, almost imitating the movements of the musicians. At the end of the concerts, the audience would often be sweaty and out of breath. They'd be whistling and clapping and crying out for more. <coughs> With the increasing popularity and fame of their music, the media and the public produced strong reactions and newspaper columns. Here they are, the slits. On stage, the costumes of the musicians vary from extravagant dresses to regular trousers and big colourful hats. Sometimes they wore their clothes inside out or upside down, wearing the skirt on the head, underwear on top of cut-off trouser legs and some performed in menswear and ties. 
One member of the group expresses about the musical position. She says, "We were very aware of. We were very aware from the beginning. We didn't want to copy twelve-bar system and and fall into routines and habits. We concluded that our rhythm should be raw and less structured and find an organic form." We started our mission when we were teenagers. Our mission was to challenge the norms, political ones, but in particular cultural norms, the ruling music culture. Grammatically, the lyrics are anarchic. They seem to be written in order to create a beat. They are there are very few proper sentences. The text is delivered in short rhythmical bursts and list-like recitations. You can understand that the lyrics touch upon subjects like the body's relation to cosmos and religion. They equate rhythm and God, and mention ordinary examples of rhythm being created in the body, like when we walk, as we nod, or when sitting still and tilting our foot. This connects to the Rastafarian religion and reggae music, and exposes genres in the slits musical fusion: reggae and punk. The Slits will never perform this song again. They stopped performing together after a few years when they were still young. Later, they reunited in a new constellation, and now the lead singer Ariop is dead. She died in 2010. I never succeeded in finding one single cover version of the song, or to locate any documentation of lyrics, notes, or chords. Just the CD I already had. I've listened to the 11-minute recording again and again and again, and have written it down as well as I could. It was impossible to get all the words. In some places, I have guessed and just written the sounds I could hear. In the beginning. 
Yeah. 